Hello and welcome to NPTEL MOOC on uh, electromagnetic waves in guided and wireless media. This is module 7 where the primary focus will be on Smith chart and its use in solving transmission line problems. Okay? Now let me warn you that Smith chart is not the magic technology, one has to understand certain basic relationships on a transmission line to effectively use Smith chart. And moreover, Smith chart can be used in most modern transmission and applications to only give you a qualitative answer. Okay? If you want exact numbers which in many practical you know, products, hardware uh, equipments are required, then you have to go back to equations, write appropriate programs and then get uh, you know, correct numbers. So if that is the case, why do we even want to use Smith chart? Well, the answer is that Smith chart gives you an excellent intuition behind what is happening on this transmission line and microwave circuits. Okay? So if for example, you want to you know, just quickly change the parameter and then note its effect on the Smith chart, I mean note its effect on the circuit, then a very quick way of doing that would be to actually use a Smith chart. In fact, you can program Smith charts, that is you can write programs that will generate Smith chart and then you know do all the manipulations for you. But you have to interpret those results and interpreting those results actually gives you a lot of physical intuition behind what is happening in the transmission line problems and that is the main reason why we want to go for Smith charts. Now even before we go to Smith chart, I would like to you know just answer a couple of questions related to earlier transmission line uh, thing. Uh, one when we talked about lossless transmission line, we represented I mean we had the characteristic equation of the trans transmission line right which was real z0 was given by square root of l by c and it was a real quantity but then impedances are kind of resistors or resistive impedances so then why do we want to call this as resistive uh, you know i mean why do we want to use a resistive impedance or a resistor like value to actually talk about lossless transmission line because we know that resistors dissipate energy the answer here is that if you take an infinite length transmission line okay, whose characteristic impedance is Z0 and it is lossless and then you launch a certain voltage and current at the generator end, okay, meaning you are actually launching some amount of power into the transmission line. Do you think that you will ever get that power back? No, the power is actually lost because these waves will continue all the way to infinity and there will be no return signals carrying the power that you have launched. So in a sense, you have kind of have a you know uh, black body so to speak wherein you are launching the power on the infinitely long transmission line and nothing is actually coming back. So to represent this fact that you know an infinitely long transmission lines actually uh, you know take out I mean uh, uh, take the power without giving any power back to the system. we have this kind of a resistive interpretation. I mean, so that is not exact answer as such, but this is one way you can think about why a lossless transmission line should be represented by real impedances. Okay, so that is the first question that I wanted to, you know, answer for you. Okay, now, I mean, not that you asked for it, but you know, this question comes up so often that I thought I will give you an answer before we move on to Smith chart. Okay. As we have said, Smith chart is essentially a relationship between gamma and z, correct? Of course, this is normalized z. The z represents the load impedance, line impedance or the input impedance depending on what position you are actually measuring or uh, you are actually denoting this one, right? And in terms of the, uh, you know, chart itself which I hope you have downloaded, you will see that there will be two kinds of uh, you know, uh, I mean there will be two kinds of chart actually if you download, you will find that in one chart the circles shrink onto the right and the other chart circles shrink onto the left. Okay? So this is one of the popular charts that you will see. So this chart, I am drawing only a few circles, so obviously you would have a full chart with you and uh, I am just drawing a few circles just to make my point clear. Okay? So this is the chart that you have, you normally would see this one and you can clearly see that the circles shrink in size as you go from left to right. Okay? An entirely different chart can be 
you know downloaded or you can find out in commercial applications I mean commercial stores uh, you will actually see that the uh, circles actually shrink onto the it is little hard for me to write, but you get the idea I think. So, the circles are kind of rotated by 90 degrees right and the arcs are also in the same manner. So, you have these arcs which are constant x circles they also look in this manner. So, it is like a mirror image of the other Smith chart. This Smith chart is actually called as admittance chart okay, because when you want to deal with many applications where you, you know you it would be sometimes very easy to work with admittances you want to be able to use this chart okay but you will also get a commercial chart in which you have both these uh, you know uh, both of these uh, circles superimposed usually with different colors if you print out a color uh, circle for you it looks very messy but you can switch between impedance and admittance okay so you don't have to worry about changing the admittance to impedance impedance to admittance as you would do with a normal smith chart so this smith chart that you have is called as zy chart z obviously standing for impedance and y standing for admittance i would not prefer using this zy chart because of the so many circles that are present it becomes quite hard to find out where the lines are moving around okay but most professionals use this zy chart because they it will save them time of conversion from impedance to admittance and admittance back to impedances okay so this you have to keep in mind but for this course we will work with only the smith chart which anyway i have drawn it several times earlier i am going to just draw a few basic circles and then indicate but the actual values i would you know uh, expect you to note those actual values uh, from the smith chart that you have keep a compass ready with you and then you can actually start working on this Smith chart. They are actually quite fun if you really think about it. Now before we start talking about how to solve the problems let me also give you one you know interesting bit of information which you can yourself find out later on. Suppose I arbitrarily locate my gamma here I can always do this because this is simply a gamma r and a gamma i plane. So, this gamma a which we will have given will, will, will give a value of say 3 plus j 4 is perfectly valid value of gamma right as far as the mathematics is concerned there is nothing which stops from having gamma a equals 3 plus j 4. And because there is a one to one relationship between this one and the normalized impedance you can also calculate the normalized impedance from gamma right you know how gamma is related to normalized impedance this is the equation. So, you invert this equation and then find out what is z a bar. Now, if you take a little bit of a time and actually do the calculations you will see that the real part of this z a will actually be negative ok. So, in sense what you are going to get in the region outside is a negative resistance uh, you know. Uh, that you are going to get and negative resistances do not exist physically, but they are excellent models for amplifiers ok. That is the reason why I said that this region outside that uh, chart that we have circle chart or the um, uh, of the max maximum magnitude gamma l equal to 1 chart corresponds to active circuits or when you work with active circuits you will be working around region external to the Smith chart as well. But because in our course we do not go to active circuits we will not deal with this one any good microwave course that is being currently offered on NPTEL also will have um, more discussions on this ok. Now, this is our chart which is very simplified fine no problem. So, what are the possible transmission line problems that I can solve with this chart? Let us begin with a very simple problem given the load impedance ZL is 50 plus J 100 ohms at some frequency where the transmission line characteristic impedance is 50 ohm can you find out what would be the admittance Y L? Well you can do so mathematically right you can first you know you have ZL you can take 1 by ZL and then you know complex conjugate multiplication and other things and you can do it in a computer I mean on a calculator you may even get this answer in a in a second or so or less than a second or so right. But imagine that you did not have calculator or you want to anyway convert impedances to admittance. The idea here is that imagine that there is a transmission line ok whose length is lambda by 4 and it is terminated by some load resistance ZL. 
calculate what would be the equivalent input impedance here. If you wish, you can also calculate the normalized value here. Okay. To your surprise, what you would actually get here will simply be the load normalized load admittance. Okay. So, if you want to unnormalize it, you simply multiply admittance which is normalized with y0 which is your admittance of the uh, transmission line. Okay. Impedances normalized can be unnormalized or restored to its value by multiplying it by z0. So, this is an interesting thing and I will leave this as an exercise for you to figure it out for yourself. So, all that you have to do is to first enter the Smith chart with the normalized load impedance, draw a constant SWR circle and move a distance of lambda by 4 what will you do I mean where will you land up when you move a distance of lambda by 4 you will actually land up exactly on the opposite sides of the circle on the same circle you will land up on the opposite side and that would correspond to the normalized load admittance. So, let us imagine that you know because Z L is given here that would be 50 plus J 100 the normalized Z L will be given by 1 plus J 2 this will be obtained by intersection of r equal to 1 and x equal to 2 circle. Okay. So, this is r equal to 1 circle that I have and x equal to 2 circle would lie somewhere over here. So, let us say this is the point A which corresponds to the normalized load impedance. Now, here is a tip please always refer all points in a sequential manner okay, so that tracing the steps becomes easier for you. I use A, B, C, D you can use 1, 2, 3, 4 you can use uh, any other symbol that you want, but you always go sequentially. Okay. Now, that you have located A as Z L bar, okay, all you have to do is to draw the constant SWR circle. So, let us say this is the SWR circle that we have drawn. So, someone might ask you what is the magnitude of gamma L or what is the full gamma L uh, of corresponding to this Z L that we have written. Z L bank magnitude that uh, or the normalized Z L that we have written is 1 plus J 2. What would be the value of gamma L? Well, all you have to do is to measure this arc. Okay, arc I mean no, sorry the length of this radius from origin to A. In fact, commercial Smith charts actually have a scale given down okay, which will in, in, indicate both magnitude as well as angle. So, there will be magnitude gamma L as well as the angle theta gamma in degrees. Okay. So, you simply take your compass measure this length here from 0 to A and then cut that on the two axis read the value here you will get gamma L and you will also get theta gamma. Okay. So, this is as simple as that. So, all you have to do is to have a compass a scale and then I mean a compass and a scale and then you are done. Right. So, you got Z L bar information you got I mean you started off with Z L bar information you found out what is the load reflection coefficient. Okay. You found out specifically what is magnitude of gamma L as well as the angle theta gamma both. Okay. Now, how do you find ad, you know admittance? You simply move along this line, you simply move a distance of lambda by 4 which exactly equals landing on the opposite side of this chart. So, I have landed on the opposite side of this, this chart which I will denote as B and you simply read the value of B. Okay. So, when you read the value of B, you will find out what would be the admittance. I will leave that as an exercise for you to figure it out. I will supply the answers during the course and this uh, B point is simply your normalized admittance. As I have told you, if you want to obtain the actual admittance, you simply multiply this Y L bar with Y naught to unnormalize everything. So, seems very interesting that we are able to start with uh, load impedances and then go all the way to uh, admittance and reflection coefficient. What if someone asks you what is your SWR on the line? Well, do you want to do a calculation? You do not have to do a calculation. Interestingly, why? Because SWR is actually the ratio of maximum voltage to minimum voltage, correct? And what is the maximum resistance that you have on the line when you measure the line what would be the maximum resistance that you will measure. Maximum resistance that you will measure will be the voltage maxima right divided by the minima of the current and maximum voltage is basically 1 plus magnitude gamma L times V 0 plus no surprises here. Minimum current will be when 1 minus magnitude gamma L V 0 plus divided by Z naught. Okay. Clearly V 0 plus V 0 plus will cancel I can move this Z naught from denominator to the numerator and what I get 
is this quantity. But what is this 1 plus magnitude gamma L by 1 minus magnitude gamma L? Ah, that is nothing but SWR, right? So, Z max is actually equal to SWR times Z naught. Interesting. Now, what is the normalized Z max? Normalized Z max is exactly equal to SWR. Okay. You can in fact show that normalized Z min that is impedance will actually be equal to 1 by SWR. Now, you do not have to do any other calculation. What you have to do is to simply move from point A and then see where you cut the real axis. Right? So, when you cut the real axis here, that would be the point where you will get the maximum value of small r, which is basically the normalized maxima. Uh, maximum resistance which is also equal to SWR. So, in one point you actually kill two stones, right? I mean you, you kill two stones with a single bird, normally you kill two birds with a single stone, now you did the other way around and what you did or what you obtained was both information on Z max as well as SWR. Okay? Again without using another calculator, if instead of moving on to this one and you know terminate or you know meeting the real axis here, if you now move 180 degrees away and then meet the real axis on this side, you will actually obtain 1 by SWR which is actually equal to Z min. You see you are actually killing 4 stones by just moving along this particular circles. right? So, this is interesting. So, you are able to use Smith chart to do these calculations, but the real power of Smith chart comes when you can solve much more complicated problems. Okay? So, we will solve slightly different uh, problem here in the remaining time of uh, our module and this will tell you most of the things that you are actually interested in, I mean how to work uh, most of the things. Okay? So, again let me draw the skeletal Smith chart here, full Smith chart you have it with you. Now, let me draw the chart. Okay. Yes, now we are ready. What problem should we consider? Well, I want to consider slightly difficult problem. I have a transmission line. Okay. Okay. I have terminated the transmission line with some load, but now at a certain distance on the transmission line, I will attach another transmission line. So, let us say this length I will call as L1, I will attach another transmission line and terminate this transmission line with a short circuit. Okay. I can terminate it with open circuit or I can terminate it with short circuit, but I have simply decided to terminate it with short circuit. Okay. And let us say the length of this line is L2 and what I want is to find out what is the equivalent admittance or the impedance at this point. Okay. I am interested in finding the equivalent admittance or the impedance of this particular uh, you know at this particular point okay, or the plane. How do I go about it? Well, because you are looking at connection of two transmission lines in parallel, right? it would be wise to work in admittance coordinates and you can convert admittance coordinates by simply treating the Smith chart as an admittance chart after you started off with impedance. For some specific numbers, let me take Z L normalized to be say 0 0.4 plus J 0 0.2. Please note that normalized uh, impedances do not have an ohm referred out there because it is normalized units, they, they do not have any units. And I will take L 1 to be equal to say 1.537 centimeter and I will take L 2 to be equal to 11.25 centimeter and I will say that lambda on this line is about 3 centimeters. Okay. So, this is the problem that I have, I have been given lambda, I have been given L 1, I have been given L 2, I want to find out what is the equivalent impedance at this point. Okay. Please carry out this problem parallelly or after listening to this one, you redo this problem again in your notebook. Okay. What is the first step? Well, you start with Z L bar, you would normally have calculated, but luckily they have calculated it for you. So, locate Z L bar. Okay. Z L bar would be located on some point 4 which is in this region plus point 2 again which is in this region. So, let us say somewhere here we locate point A which corresponds to this Z L bar. Okay. So, I have located this at point A, then what I have to do is that I actually draw a line. Okay such that it passes through this chart and on the outer scale WTG scale note down the value here. Okay. So, note down what would be the WTG scale here 
and once you have noted down then you move on this transmission line ok. We will assume that both transmission lines have the same propagation uh, sorry have the same characteristic impedance uh, which anyway you do not even need to know at this point because we have been working with normalized impedances. But if you want you can take Z0 to be equal to 50 ohms ok. So, after locating here and after drawing a line and extending it onto WTG scale and noting down the points over there. Now, I also want to draw a constant SWR circle ok which is obvious specify this constant R equal to 1 circle with a different color because this circle will be very special for us. So, always draw slightly thicker circle on this R equal to 1 uh, so that you are you know uh, working with that. Now, what you have to do is to move from this load point all the way up to L1 right I mean a distance of L1, but because on the transmission line you are going to move distances relative to lambda you simply calculate what is L1 by lambda this would be 1.537 divided by 3 centimeter. So, this is slightly how much this is greater than uh, this is about uh, lambda by 2 lambda by 2 would be 1.5. So, therefore, this is slightly greater than 1.5 right. In fact, the actual distance is just 0 0.30 0 0.037 lambda because that is the excess one that would decide what is the uh, uh, this one right. Now, before you can do that because you want admittances you have to first convert uh, the impedance point A onto admittance and you do that by simply moving on to the opposite side. So, I will use this one. So, point B corresponds to admittance you can read the admittance value B as 2 minus J and after you have read the admittance on this same SWR circle or rather first you extend this note down what is WTG coordinates and then you have to move along this circle ok. And how much you have to move you have to move only a distance of 0 0.037 lambda meaning to this WTG coordinate you add 0 0.037 lambda and then move ok. You will see later on that it will actually lead you on the outer WTG scale on up to this point which we will call as. So, this we will call as B prime we will call this as C prime that is any numbers on the WTG scale I am denoting it by primes and then move in along the line to see that it actually is cutting the point here. This is interesting you know what is the coordinates at this point. I know that the coordinate of or the real part of this one is equal to 1 because it is actually intersecting this red circle. It turns out that this value is actually 1 minus j ok. So, the normalized admittance that you have found is actually equal to 1 minus j this point is what we would call as point C ok. So, doing this calculation from ZL all the way to moving a distance of L1 you have reached an admittance of 1 minus j ok. Now, what do you do? Well, you have a short circuit here and a length L2 that we have taken which is 11.25 centimeter. So, this length is actually quite large but it is also short circuited at the load end and now where is the short circuit admittance? Well, this is the open circuit impedance, but this is the short circuit admittance right. So, this is short circuit admittance at this point and on the WTG scale you can clearly see that this would be 0.25 and when you move a distance of L2 you are going to move a distance of L2 by lambda which is relative to the wavelength and it will see I mean it will be something like 0.25 lambda ok. You can figure out if this is true or or if this is not 0.25 this is 0.0 or 0.125 lambda I think yeah. So, this would be 0.125 lambda. So, after subtracting the full wavelengths from this one. So, 11.25 minus 3 minus 3 minus 3 right. So, you move so remove 9. So, you will get 2.25 and even from 2.25 you can actually remove uh, I mean make this one divided by 3 onto the lambda and then you will get some number here which I, I hope it is equal to 0.125 uh, lambda. So, if it is equal to 0.125 lambda then no problem uh, or is this more than that um, anyway. So, do not worry about it because this is the open circuit point this is a short circuit admittance right. So, you move a distance of about 0.9 ok this is the admittance that you have moved and how much is the admittance that you have actually moved. Remember in the impedance scale this was negative whereas, this region was sorry this imp impedance was 
positive whereas here the reactances were negative. But because you have converted the chart into an admittance chart, this region is positive admittances or susceptance and this region is negative susceptance. Okay. So, what you have done is that as you have moved you have obtained uh, admittance of about uh, plus j okay. that is interesting you have obtained an admittance of about plus j and now the total admittance that you are going to see will be the sum of the admittances that you see here. So, this admittance is plus j. So, the sum of the admittances that you see here y in will actually be 1 minus j plus j which is equal to 1. right? Now, what is the meaning of admittance equal to 1 or normalized impedance equal to 1? That it means that for a wave that propagates here the equivalent admittance it sees in this plane is actually equal to z naught right impedance it equal to z naught. So, the admittance is equal to 1 by z naught. The implication of this is that if the wave sees the characteristic impedance at that particular operating frequency it means the reflection coefficient gamma is actually equal to 0. So, there is no reflection anything that is coming from this plane the entire wave is propagated onto the other side. So, you have eliminated reflections on this main transmission line by connecting across another transmission line and this connection of the transmission line is called as uh, you know a stub. In this case a stub was actually quite long, but usually the stub is made quite small by choosing appropriately the termination. So, here we took short circuit termination, but you can take open circuit termination and then you can see that you will be able to uh, again obtain this matching condition and the beauty of this matching condition is that you uh, you know uh, uh, is that the impedance that you see after connecting this stub will be equal to the characteristic impedance thereby eliminating any reflections on this main line. Okay. However, there are still reflections at these points. So, for example, in this side of the transmission line or in this region of the transmission line there is reflection because the impedance here is not the not equal to characteristic impedance. So, there is a mismatch in this region the V s w r will be non zero or rather greater than 1 here. The V s w r here will be equal to infinity on the stub because on an ideal lossless line or an ideal lossless stub terminated in short circuit or open circuit will have uh, gamma l magnitude equal to 1 and therefore, S w r value will be equal to 0. So, this problem which we actually went in the reverse way okay, is called uh, you know designing or impedance matching technique. So, what we have done is to actually design a transmission line circuit or rather we have taken the designed transmission line and then showed that impedance matching is happening because someone has actually calculated this length l 1 and length L 2 appropriately with a given termination whether it is short circuit or open circuit. Usually what happens is you are given a transmission line, you are given a load, you are given the operating frequency or wavelength and then ask to design a transmission line matching circuit and this is called as a stub matching circuit and this is a uh, shunt matching network, shunt being another word for admittances. So, because you kept them in parallel this is um, you know uh, uh, parallel admittance thing and you have actually managed to match the transmission line the main transmission line such that you have eliminated reflections on that main line by appropriately taking the distance as well as the length of the stub. So, where you put the stub and what would be the length of the stub are the two design parameters and given these two parameters can be varied depending on the values of z l and z naught that you have you can always match any network. Of course, this has other drawbacks which are overcome by increasing the number of stubs. Uh, so, you go from one stub, two stub, three stub and multiple stubs. Uh, those things are best left for a different course 